well down to um, single cell organisms, to plants and animals, to planets, right? Um, the Gaia theory is that the earth is our mother and everything upon it is similar to the different things that happen within our own bodies. Like people are the central nervous system, the waters, the blood. And so there are um, symbologies that we worship where we see nature as perfect. And we see man-made structures broken all the time, including some religions. But we try to, as pagans, we try to remain close to the earth and have a personal connection with deity. My job as a priestess is more around leading rituals, organizing events, and less about telling someone how to connect with deity or what deity is telling to them, unless they say, will you please just, you know, tell me what deity wants me to hear. Of course, I can do spiritual counseling, but priests and priestesses are in the pagan community are more about holding a lantern up when things are dark, you know? It's about helping you find your own way rather than telling you the way. There are a lot, a lot of different kind of pagan faiths, and we pretty much believe that all of them are true in the heart of the worshiper. Sometimes individual people will squabble over, you know, theological differences, but the heart of paganism is, is that the gods believe that all of us are their children. And if you're trying to worship, they will receive that and speak back to you. It's kind of a symbiotic relationship, right? Where they give to us, we give to them. That's what worship is all about. So it, it's much less about gods being out there is it more about God's being right here? The magic is right here. There are different kinds of deities in paganism. There are uh, star deities, astrological, astral deities, uh, land deities, and then ancestral deities. Ancestral deities such as um, somebody that lived before, did great heroic deeds, stories were told about them, people still honor them, such as George Washington is an example of an ancestral deity to the United States. We talk about him. We have a birthday for him. If you had a um, ancestral deity of a tribe, such as the um, the Norse deities, are considered people who lived and became deified over time. Land deities are like rivers, the spirit of a river, or a well or a hill, a mountaintop. You ever looked at a mountain and you're like, oh my God, and you just feel moved by the majesty and power of it. So people um, of ancient times and, and today pagans recognize that as the, the spirit of a deity. And some people, people have it at different, different levels in their own mind based on their own spiritual path. It's not a, this is how you do it, do it this way or you're wrong. It is go out and explore the amazing adventure of life and do it with pure, pure intent and honest desire to learn, work on getting your ego out of the way and find yourself closer and closer to deity. So it's, it's a journey and there are practices in it which uh, mostly revolve around, in Wicca specifically, mostly revolve around where the sun and the moon is in the sky. So it's, it's astrological. When the sun is at this point, we have spring, right? And when the sun is at this point, we have summer. Sun is at this point, we have May Day. There are different things that are happening on the earth, such as the earth is in bloom. So we, we honor the fertility that we see or as in fall when the earth is in dying, we, we ritualize and honor the act of crossing over and to the other side so that we can embrace the power of the cycle rather than fear any one aspect of death, any one aspect of life, which is sometimes death. Uh, there are 
more, there are so many ways to think about deity and each one of them manifests in, in each individual human. We believe that each person is a manifestation of deity and that their lessons are holy. We don't really believe in sin. We don't really believe in right and wrong. Right and wrong are kind of Christian terms in the way pagans think. Now, what's right for me and what's right for you, you know, is different because, you know, I might be allergic to gluten and bread might be your favorite thing. And that's different. But right and wrong for what other people, like I can't say, hey, you can't eat bread because I'm allergic to gluten. I can't make those decisions for you. So right and wrong in a whole world concept, what's wrong for the gazelle is right for the lion, right? So we seek to understand the things that cause us to question, right? We don't feel like there are any questions that are off limits. We, we encourage education because education um, uh, solves ignorance, right, and, and fear. If you are educated on a subject, you're not afraid of it for the most part, which is kind of how I got into witchcraft. I was raised Mormon, and I was terrified of demons because of the Mormon doctrine and the things that people had said to me. So... Um, Somebody on the television told me that knowledge was power. So I decided to start studying about demons so I could figure out what was going on with me because I could hear things. And I, I had this really deep connection with, with God and I could hear things that weren't in the room. I could tell what people were thinking and it, I, I pondered whether or not I was crazy. And so I started studying about what was going on with me and I found out that there was a different religion that I didn't ever know about with a female deity, which in 1980 for a, a young Mormon girl, the concept of a female deity was like not there. <laughs> we, a woman can't be God. And so that caused me to question and led me to the path of, of balance. And Wicca is all about the balance. We look at the world around us and we let it tell us about the other things that the questions that are happening in our head. We believe that the questions that come up in the back of your head are the promptings of spirit. And those are the questions that you should seek to answer. So we, we operate on a, in a circle, like we all get in a circle. We don't go to a church and sit in rows and listen to one person talking. We create sacred space together. And that is done in a circle where there are the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water, which we believe are the things that everything is made of. Earth is a physical symbol. Fire is the, the instinct that something has, like, like the instinct to you know, mate, eat, breathe, those kinds of things. Um, water are your feelings and air are your thoughts. And when you have all of these things in balance, you are whole and holy. And our entire religion is based on those small principles, as above, so below, as you see outside of you is what's going on inside of you. And as we come into conflict or success, you know, we try to learn and grow and be better tomorrow than we were today. We try not to compete with each other, but you know, we are human and, and everybody, everybody has their own lessons. But, um, the, the goal is, is to compete with yourself and to be the best you that you can be, to see yourself as an expression of God that's whole and holy and try to uh, maximize your positives while shining a light on your shadow and figuring out what those things have to teach you and incorporating them into a positive um, force on the earth. So we have a few tools. I didn't know if anybody had a question yet. Do you have any questions about that before I move on? Quick overview. Okay. So we have a few tools which are kind of interesting. And a lot of people don't, they see some of these things on the movies and they don't really understand what we do with them. So I thought I would bring that to light for those of you who were wondering. So the earth element represents foundation. And this is kind of an earth symbol that is traditional to Wicca. 
these different things, these different symbols mean different things, but it's mostly the pentagram in the center is the most important part of this. And we believe that the earth portal is the portal through which all things come from the other side. So they come from the other side into this realm, physical realm, as energy. And as they get here, they become manifest. So... Oh, no. We pull from the other side and turn it into what we want with the direction of our minds. But we use tools to do it, such as a wand. Y'all seen wands, right? So there are a lot of different wands. This is this is a more of a modern Harry Potter type wand, like you would see on television. The wands that were more popular when I got into witchcraft were encrusted with gems. And then we had Harry Potter and they had these kinds of things. So these are what you're seeing now. Th this isn't really a wand that I would cast with. This is more of a, of a talking piece, okay? But what wands do is they work with the earth quarter because this represents fire, which remember I said is fertility and instinct. That's also creation. And so the reason you see witches doing this is because they're pulling energy through the earth quarter and making it manifest with their wand. Boom. It's female to male. Questions? Okay, this is a chalice. This is, this is also a conversation piece. It's not actually a working chalice. This was a gift that someone gave the church. Chalices are for the, for the witches in the room who are like, I don't see any magic on those tools. They, they've not been consecrated. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because witches can see magic, whether they know, whether they know they're physically seeing something, they know it in here that whether or not they're seeing something. Mm. And we, we teach you how to, increase that ability through the use of these tools so this is a tool of water this represents your emotions you know how when you get drunk people start toasting i love you man and they drink and stuff like that so that is a tool of, of water of emotions this is also um symbolizes the path through the underworld that witches walk whereas you have the, the flat on the other side the plate this represents the path of the underworld. And then the blade. Y'all see witches with blades like, oh, I'm going to kill something. We don't cut anything with these knives, you guys. <laughs> if you get blood on your blade, you have to cleanse it and reconsecrate it. It's not a uh, simple thing. It is, it is considered no longer sacred. So we use this to direct our will. And we also use it with the chalice to represent um, certain energies as well. So the knife represents air. It is your, your thought, whereas the wand represents your passion. Okay? And we use this to create sacred space and to cut into the energies and make them stable on the earth plane while we're doing our magic. And then at the end, we use the blade to release all of that. So the, the blade commands the power and makes it manifest on the earth and, and cuts a place between the worlds for us to do magic. And then we use that same tool to release that back into the ether. So those are our four tools. Do y'all have questions yet? Uh, I have no? a question. Okay. So you said that something needs to be reconsecrated. Can you describe what that means and what that looks like? Well, consecration um, is, is different for different people. But basically what you do is you take your tool and you would cleanse it however is appropriate. So like you might run this through water if it got blood on it, you'd wash it, right? But if you were going to consecrate, say, a set of tarot cards, you wouldn't want to wash these. Say if these got something happened to them that you felt were energetically not okay, you'd like waft these through incense. 
right? Mm -hmm. Cleanse them um, because that, that wouldn't damage them, right? So then you take your blade and you program it to what you want it to do or whatever tool you're, you're using. So you would put it on your earth altar, right? And you would take your tools and you would bless it one by one. You would say, I bless this knife to do something earthy, uh, to grant me prosperity and resources to be able to do my magical work. And then you would, you would take the, the wand or you would hold it over a flame, which is what I, I would usually do is I would hold it over a flame and I would say, uh, you are connected to my instincts and my will. And then I would put it in the water or take some potion and anoint it, or put it in the water, bless it with an emotional connection to me. And then I would run it through incense smoke, which represents air, right? Incense air. And I would give it an intellect and give it a name. And then it would be a thought form. So what makes something magic is the intent behind it. And that, that is what we, um, that is like a basic thing. So we imbue all our whole life with intent. People are like, oh, my life feels so empty. Well, that's because you're not doing things with intent. You do all of the rest of the things that everybody else does that makes their life special, but you're not doing it with intent. You're just doing it. So it doesn't feel special to you, such as getting up out of bed is, is like, oh God, I got to get up and face the day. But if you get up out of bed and you have a morning ritual and you make it a sacred act of, oh, uh, today I didn't die. And you project into your world the excitement that you want about your day. You want adventure. You want prosperity. You want to meet the person you're going to marry, whatever it is. If you start your day with intent and you send it a direction, then it's, it's a sacred thing and it makes you feel fulfilled. And then as you go about your day and you meet the man you end up marrying, you're like, wow, that ritual, that prayer stuff, that works, right? Same thing with food. You eat, but do you stop and think about the fact that you have a plate and a cup and a knife and a spoon or fork and that you have received these things from the earth. What all energy went into it? Do you express your gratitude for it? Do you bless your meal and the people that you're eating with and make it a sacred rite? Or do you just grab a hamburger and stuff it in your face? Right? <laughs> Same thing with going to sleep, making love, having a baby, going to work, taking a shower, putting on your makeup, going out to drink with your friends you can make everything in your life a sacred and holy experience if you put intent and you invite deity to come along with you that is what creates ritual thank you that answer your question yeah it did thank you <laughs> okay so i thought that we could go around and i could show you what a witch's house looked like and then we could come back and do a ritual and then we could have question time. Okay. So I'm going to stop this video and I'm going to go into the other thing that you see that says Bella and we'll walk around my house. You can hear me. <laughs> bad, 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 bad. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so you can see me, right? All right. So I'm going to get up here and turn the camera around for you. How do we turn the camera around? I'm so good at technology. <laughs> there you go. Not really. Okay. So. There's a lot of stuff in a witch's house. For one thing, we are resourceful people and we don't ever want to throw anything away because we could do a spell with that. <laughs> so there's lots and lots of stuff, oils. Can you see? 
Is it light enough? I can't really see because it's small. Let me, oh, oh, now I can see. So this is our main altar at the Mother Church. You can see that there are deities. The Horned God and the Great Mother. Offerings. There are chalices. There, there's not an earth pinnacle because I just took it off of there to show you, but there's cauldrons, which can also represent the same thing. This is my high priestess crown. I'm trying to get out of the light. Okay. And then books. Books and statues and books and cats because, you know, <laughs> witchcraft and books and statues and artwork and books. Okay, this is, this is one wall. And then <laughs> you will always find sticks and staves and swords and um, what is it? What is the, what is this, the weapon? with the sword on the end. What is this kind of weapon called? The long one on the sword that Athena has. It's on the tip of my tongue. Y'all know what it's about. Somebody will tell me. But there are books and books <laughs> and shields and books because if you are studying witchcraft, you have to read a lot of stuff. If somebody tells you that they're pagan, they have probably read a lot of books, a lot, a lot of books. So all of these, we, we use at different times of the year or for different rituals and things belong to different deities at the mother church. So that shield is the shield of Athena. It was created by the vessel of Athena who held the goddess Athena at spring mysteries. That, um, Sun disc is a representative of the goddess Amaterasu, who is Japanese. That's a painting that I did of a succubus. There's, there's all of this. Oh, this, this is the fan of Hera, the goddess Hera. It has Hera written on it, and that is used when the goddess incarnates at Spring Mysteries. A lot of a lot of stuff. That's all I wanted to share. So when I talk about spring mysteries, we do festivals every year and the gods come and are incarnated. These are our, our different places. This is all air stuff. This is all of the water stuff. And they're all haphazard because it gets used all the time. This is fire stuff. And this is earth stuff where when we get ready to do spell work or change over altars or something like that, we have all of these things. So this clock, Dusty, my, my partner in the Archpriest of the Church was on a radio show one time and he told them that we worshiped a big clock because astrology is based on time. <laughs> So I bought a big clock. This is a representation of Gaia, the Earth Mother. This was created by a very um, prominent high priest of our religion named Oberon Zell. He is, he's the leader of a different magical house. Like I'm the leader of the Aquarian Tabernacle Church. He's the leader of a different magical house. But those are all the animals and stuff in her hair. And she's pregnant with the Earth. And when we talk about Gaia and the Earth Mother, this is kind of what we see in our heads. So when you're wondering like how that could be a deity, that's how we see it. We, this is our main altar. That is the goddess Fortuna. She's one of my patrons. And then this is Hikate. She's the patron of the church. Of course, now there's scales because Fortuna is all about the balance. As I told you, Wicca is about the balance, but there's also Bast because witches and cats. 
there is a depiction of the god. Peacock feathers for Hera. She is um, one of my personal patrons. I've been a vessel of Hera at Spring Mysteries. This, this was um, a very magical thing, that, that gift that happened. So it stays on our altar. And then there is Kuan Yin and Ganesh. This is Wellis which is a Nordic God. So as you can see, there's a bunch of deities there sharing space. I'm gonna try to turn this around. Questions about any of those altars while we were standing here? Uh, can I ask, um, did you uh, start collecting these statues and deities uh, kind of one altar at a time, or um, did they each find their own kind of space? So, so like the Fortuna was given to me by someone who was being initiated. The Gaia was given to me by Oberon Zell. There are, um, it's a lot of gifting in the craft. There's not a lot of money that circulates in the craft. There's a lot of gifting that happens. I'm gonna go put you on the other, um, I'm gonna turn this off because I'm back in front of the other one. Yay, and we're back. Turn my, so it, it's also, the church was established in 1979. So when I was um, appointed archpriestess, I bought all my stuff from Georgia, six foot statues that weigh a thousand pounds and just a bunch of stuff. And I added that collection to Pete's collection, which was, I was appointed archpriestess in 2012. He started the church in 1979. That's a lot of, collecting and receiving gifts and you know every time you have a an epiphany from a deity you sometimes will pick up a different thing you know or i received this when i was in salem from one of my i'm sorry you guys somebody can dusty can you grab the phone okay um this was a gift people just you know it, it's like uh, you know how Christians have, they have tithes and money, right? And you can put that in the plate. Well, pagans gift. And I, that's where a lot of this stuff comes from. And then we used it in worship. So you, you know, you keep it. <laughs> you give, you, you sometimes, like I've gotten into giving things back. We sometimes auction things off when they've been around for a very long time to raise money for the church. But most of it we keep because it's um it represents magic and it's it built i don't know we just do that that's what we do uh, there are other pagans in the room don't you kind of collect artifacts from your adventures way too many <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're in the process of, of uh, getting rid of things right now and um throwing away things that aren't magical and sacred so that we can make room for more stuff. We have quite a collection. I didn't take you to the storage buildings. We have three storage buildings stuffed full. Wow. That we, use for, we use those at festivals though. So at, at festival at Spring Mysteries, are you guys familiar with the Eleusinian Mysteries? You're students of theology. So some of you might be familiar with the Eleusinian Mysteries. So mm -hmm. the ancient rites of Greece, do you remember the myth that you probably learned in English class senior year where they talk about Persephone and Hades and Demeter and Persephone gets abducted and taken to the underworld and then at the end of that we get seasons. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that myth? No, okay. I've never heard that one. <laughs> so in the ancient world, they had this place called Eleusis and they, um, it's where the Holy Mother had her ministry and she taught the people the rights that created humanity and that is the seat of western culture and in a, in a matter of fact in 2021 Eleusis has been named the center the cultural center of europe is huge big deal it's the first pilgrimage of the 
um, of any religion, and it went on longer than Mecca, like pre-Mecca. <laughs> that was the pilgrimage. People came from all over. They spent a year's salary to attend the rites. The pictures that we have of ancient Eleusis are, are really like a, a much grander scale than you would think of for that time period, but our history our history makes us think that, you know, there, there was caveman and then civilization grew and grew and grew and grew, but that's not actually what happened. It, you know, there are dips, there are falls, you know, what happened to the Mayans, the Native Americans used to cover this continent. So the Lucinia Mysteries became a huge power. And so when the Holy Roman Empire swept across Europe, they stole all of the stuff from Eleusis and took it to Rome. Mm -hmm. And that's why you have Vatican City. So we have been charged by the Great Mother to bring those mysteries back to life. And we've been doing them for 35 years now. So every year we have this huge Easter pageant, which is where, you know, Easter is actually pagan, the bunny and the egg and all of that stuff that's pagan. And then the Jesus stuff has kind of been meshed in because the way Christianity kind of, kind of formed on top of paganism, right? And so they, they blended some of the traditions in order to make it comfortable for people who were converting. And so that's where Santa Claus and rabbits and all that come from ancient pagan ways. That's why when people say Santa is Satan, they're like, because it's pagan and we have the horned God, but the horned God does, is, does not represent the devil. The horned God represents the, um, the horned animals that, that sustain ancient people. They would hunt and the animals that they hunted were traditionally horned animals. And so the God of the hunt became a horned God has nothing to do with evil. We don't believe in inherent evil in paganism. We believe that there are, um, there's the balance. And sometimes things happen that we like, and sometimes things happen that we don't like. But since we cannot understand the entirety of deity, we can't really call it bad because we don't know what other things happened because of it. We just have to stay in our humility and know that everything happens for a reason and try to find the good in all things. So do you guys want to do a ritual, a small little ritual? What I thought we would do is I would say a traditional Wiccan prayer, which is called the Charge of the Goddess. It's about the only thing that all Wiccans agree on, but they, even there are different versions of that. And then we do a thing called um, gratitude. You know what a gratitude is when you say, I mean, not a gratitude, but an intention. An intention is when you say, today I'm going to do this. Today, and that, that's what I was talking about at the beginning, when you direct your day, when you say, this is what I'm going to do, the powers that be, the angels, the spirit guides, God, goddess, whoever it is that you believe in, hears you and goes, oh, okay, that's what we're going to do today. And then they work in concert with you to make that happen. Then you express, and you have to do intentions in the present positive as though they've already happened. If you say, I will do then the energies will make it to where you will do it, but not that you've done it, right? So you never get there. Tomorrow never comes. So you want to say, I have this, I do this, I am this in the present positive. And that's how we make things manifest because your word is your wand. It's really your thoughts and your words are what makes your magic happen. And everything else is so that your mind can focus. Okay. And there, there are symbols to help you. Cause once you get like, I don't use all of this stuff anymore. I just make things happen. Cause I think it right. When you think something it, that goes back to e equals MC squared, right? Matter sped up, turns into light. Well, light or energy, energy, energy slowed down, turns into matter. So we grab the energy that's slowing down and turn it into what we want to when we set our intention. Makes sense? Then gratitudes, you know, you can always be unhappy about the things that you don't have. 
And then that creates a miserable existence. But if you focus on the gifts that you do have, then you can see how blessed you are and you can go through your day going, yeah, see, I already have this and I already have this and I already have this and I already did this. So the thing that I set my intention for today is totally within my grasp because look at all these other things that I've been blessed with. And it gets your mind in that space of appreciation. And when you're appreciative of stuff, it's easier for deity to give you things because appreciation happens in your crown chakra where spirit is. Makes sense to go off on Hindu stuff. My, my bill, like, I don't know about that, but, <laughs> but yeah, that's gratitude helps. That's what we look up to God. We're like, where is God up there somewhere? Because our crown chakra is what helps us reach deity. And our transpersonal point is about right here above our head. And that is, I call it your wormhole to God. That's when, when you're hearing things, you like hear that still small voice of deity, you know, you're a spiritual student. So I know that you know about that connection with deity. So when you hear that still small voice, that is where it's coming from. Your transpersonal and your crown chakra. That's why you, when you talk to God, you look up. It's instinctual. That's that fire stuff. Then I thought we could close it with another um, Wiccan prayer that raises energy. And then y'all could see what that's like. Does that sound like fun? Everybody want to do that? Woo. <laughs> okay. We shall go forth. Okay. Whenever ye have need of anything once in a month, and better it be when the moon is full, then shall ye assemble in some secret place and adore the spirit of me who am queen of all witches. There shall ye assemble, ye who are fain to learn all sorcery yet have not one as deep as secrets. To these will I teach things that are yet unknown, and you shall be free from slavery. And as time that you be really free, you shall be naked in your rights, and you shall dance, sing, feast, make music and love all in my praise. For mine is the ecstasy of the spirit, and mine also is joy on earth. For my law is love unto all beings. Keep pure your highest ideals, strive ever towards them. Let not stop you or turn you aside. For mine is the secret door which opens upon the land of youth, and mine is the cup of the wine of life, which is the cauldron of Caribbean and the holy grail of immortality. Let my worship be, be within the heart that rejoiceth. For behold, all acts of love and pleasure are my rituals. Therefore, let there be beauty and strength, power and compassion, honor and humility, mirth and reverence within me. And those who think to seek for me know, thy seeking and yearning shall avail thee not, unless thou knowest the mystery. That if that which thou seekest, thou findest not within thee, Thou wilt never find it without thee. For behold, I have been with thee from the beginning, and I am that which is attained at the end of desire. So now we will do intentions. So my intention is today I will correctly and completely convey my thoughts about Wicca to these wonderful students and help enlighten them to paganism. Your turn. What will you do with your day? Um, do you want us like to each yeah. go? Yes, you can go. Do it. Do a set. Do whatever you are doing. Okay. Okay, I'll go first, and then um, maybe I'll just call names like based on the way we're ordered. Um, today I will focus on my work and be motivated enough to complete the tasks that I need to do. So I did something wrong and I do this all the time. My husband would correct me, but he's being very kind of me and didn't correct me today, but I heard him <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So we have to say I am. I always say I will, and then I have to fix that. So I am clearly and correctly conveying my thoughts to all you lovely, beautiful people. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I am focused, and I am motivated enough to finish my tasks today. Uh, Caitlin, do you want to go next? 
Okay. Um, I am working in the garden because it has way too many weeds and they're taking over all my herbs. <laughs> Darwin. <sighs> oh, I am <laughs> focused and motivated to clean up my room and finish packing pack my stuff. Jill. I am at peace and ready to move forward uh, in my own intellectual pursuits. Madison? Um, I am motivated to do my research today, and I am also resting. <laughs> Both important. Tyra? <laughs> Um, I am starting my new sewing project today. Yay! Juan? I am unpacking my kitchen. <laughs> Exciting. Sinit? Um, I am finally going to take the bike out for a stroll. So, yeah. Kyle? Um, I am finishing some assignments today and enjoying the day. And Jenny. I am prioritizing my mental health and giving myself the rest that I need. Oh, you guys are so good. So important. <laughs> now we do gratitude. So think about the things that you're grateful for. And you don't really, we don't really take turns for this. You just say it when you want to say it because this is called raising energy, right? And raising energy, everybody puts their energy in whenever they feel like it. So I'm really grateful to be here with you today. I am really grateful for my friends. I am really grateful for my new job. I'm grateful for electricity. <laughs> I am grateful for my cats. I am, I am grateful for the Sega Space today. Visit me. <laughs> I'm grateful for my supportive family. I am grateful that I get to work from home in such a nice home with my dog. I am also grateful for my cat. <laughs> I'm grateful for my sisters. I'm grateful for a big treasure hoard like a dragon. <laughs> I am grateful for the nice weather for once. That's a good one. Yeah. Grateful for the internet. <laughs> Everything it lets us do, especially right now. <laughs> yeah. You didn't have it last week, so I'm sure you're feeling extra grateful now. Yeah. Yeah, it was like the better part of two weeks, man. <sighs> Don't do it. I'm grateful for the cleaner air that the uh, current issues in the world have brought to us. Mm. I'm grateful for those current issues. I'm grateful that things are being stirred up and people are standing up and speaking out. Viva la revolución. <laughs> I am grateful that I have such an awesome job where I can sit here with all my friends and learn about amazing religions and faiths around the world and get paid for it. <laughs> Damn. Right. I am grateful for the library I have in my home as well as the one I have at work. <laughs> I am grateful for skip the dishes when I can't stand and make food for myself. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> My son does dishes every morning, so I don't have to. <laughs> Try to do five. Try to do five. And we can get that happy okay. factor up. Gotcha. Come on. Well, okay. well if, no problem. Uh, <laughs> Easy. For uh, Juan and Jill for always helping me along my path. I'm grateful for juice boxes. 
<laughs> I just had one and it makes me feel like I'm in elementary school again. <laughs> Lovely. Lovely. I, I'm grateful for Jillian's extended library. <laughs> <laughs> and for her leveraging her access for the rest of us. <laughs> I'm grateful for her generosity. Um, I'm grateful for my cousin driving to me to the hospital twice this weekend. That was fun. I am grateful um, that I don't have to go to the hospital and that I've been very healthy for <laughs> at least the last couple months. Uh -huh. That's what happens when you don't leave your house. <laughs> yeah, the moment you leave your house, everything, it just goes downhill really quick. It just gets fucked up, man. <laughs> I'm quite over it. I'm the human race to continue to strive for excellence. Here, here. I am grateful to the university for bringing in contact with all these amazing people and in Continuing my passion for learning. Mm. Oh. I am grateful that we can finally learn about paganism without the stigma around it. Mm -hmm. I am grateful for my parents give, uh, providing financial support. Mm. Mm. I'm grateful to finally have some other pagans at the FSC. <laughs> Hopefully they just keep coming. Well, there's so many more pagans now. When I, when I started, there were not. There are a lot of us now. Yeah, Calgary's pagan community is so small, which is why we've had to reach out. But obviously it's growing because this we have three pagans here, and that's not even all of our all of them that hang out there. So that's awesome. I'm uh, grateful I'm for shipping, like from online ordering to my house, which <laughs> I'm very grateful for that. I'm grateful for like the people who are going out and protesting right now for the, the Black Lives Movement. And it's just, I'm grateful for all those people who are who see the problem, who are trying to make the change for it. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful um, that I have my own space and a, a house that I can isolate mm -hmm. in, not have to risk getting other people sick. Um, I'm grateful for healthcare workers. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, grateful to you, Bella. Thank you very much for uh, not only your time, but for a glimpse into a, a pagan organization, which is not something we really have <laughs> here at all, you know. Uh, there's only big ones, yeah. Yeah, well, and not, but to, to get a bit of a glimpse behind the curtain, uh, to see that, you know, that there's, uh, there's international groups that uh, to, to see your posters that you have for your ceremonies, I'm like, man, those are hot. That's some <laughs> good design work. It's not the kind of manky ass, you know, someone with very, very little experience just throwing paint. something together. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, exactly. It's not Microsoft Paint. Um, to see the, um, the mysteries presented beautifully. I'm really grateful for the ATC for hosting events online. I was able to uh, attend the morning daily devotional and it was super amazing. It was nice to meet a bunch of other people. Mm. Very cool. Which is what we're doing right now is the daily devotional. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so it, it feels like we have, have reached the time where we're ready to close the ritual. Is that good? Anybody got any final gratitudes that they want to say? Go ahead. Sarah, I'm grateful for your smile. Anytime <laughs> you crack it, it just brightens me right up. Oh, only whenever you're a one, a round one. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Make me blush. 
see how we're all smiling? That is the purpose of this ritual. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sing a song to raise the energy and send it off to the gods. Okay. Eco eco as a rack. Eco eco zomalak. Eco eco carnunos. Eco eco radia. Dark sun night and shining north. East and south and west and north. Hearken to the witch's rune. Here we come to call you forth. Earth and water, air and fire, powers of the witches play. Waking all ye unto life, come ye as the charmers may. Queen of heaven, queen of hell, horned hunter of the night. Lend your power to our spell and work our will by magic, right? By all the power of land and sea, all the might of moon and sun, as we do will so mote it be. Get this spell and be it done. We go, we go as a rack. We go, we go Zomalak. We go, we go Burner Nose. We go, we go Radia. We go, we go as a rack. We go, we go Zomalak. We go, we go Burner Nose. We go, we go Radia. We go, we go as a rack. We go, we go Zomalak. We go, we go Burner Nose. We go, we go Radia. That is how we do it. That is how we raise energy and release the energy. And we expect that the gods hear our prayers and smile favorably upon us and manifest our day as directed. So, do y'all have any more questions about paganism? Anything? You can ask me anything. I am curious. You um, made a mention earlier to the like E equals MC squared is. Um, is the connection to those spiritual aspects of science something that is through like all these pagan churches or is that something that you really connected with? Um, so I, I had, I wanted to be a doctor and I decided that Western medicine didn't really make people well. So I, I decided to go into spiritual healing, which then led me into becoming a priestess. And so I have a very scientific mind. I believe that the in the age of Aquarius, that what you're going to see is witchcraft is science unsplained. So the sign looks like this. So I think that, you know, witchcraft and science are going to end up working together as we get more and more um, tools to measure what witches have intuitively seen over the years equals mc squared is like y'all seen lucy y'all see that movie lucy where she got really 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 smart and she had all these crazy powers so you only use about five percent of your brain and witchcraft is an endeavor to use more and more parts of your brain so that is kind of where the sense comes from and the psychicness and the ability to see things that are far away from you and make things happen and stuff like that. It's about using bigger parts of your brain. So I think that, that Einstein was a genius and he spoke a lot of truth about magic because it's, well, it's the same thing with string theory. If you talk to quantum physicists, if you watch, say like, what the bleak do we know? You watch quantum physicists, they, they are speaking what we have been teaching for a very long time. They just have tools to measure it now. That, does that make sense? A single this year is about science and it's called Technomancy, our festival that we do in the fall. We're gonna explore Technomancy because we're all, you know, this is our world now. <laughs> I've been, I haven't left there since March. And so teaching us um, our, our festivals because we're the mother church, our festivals we'll try to be cutting edge on what's coming next. And so technomancy is kind of where we're going with science and magic and, and the internet and the, the use of these tween spaces. Magic happens in tween spaces, which is not a space that is here or there, right? It's a space that it exists, but it's neither here nor there. It's between worlds. And this is a tween space. This is why when you get in here, we can work rituals and do magic and make prayer happen because time and space is an illusion that makes us as humans be able to process all of the things that are happening in the world around us. Otherwise we wouldn't be able to deal with it. So yes, <laughs> the short of it is yes. 
E equals MC squared is, is a magical formula that Einstein came up with. Leonardo da Vinci was brilliant. He was also, um, he was a part of some magical order. I think the French Mason, something like that. If you dig into the, a lot of the brighter minds, you will find that they were part of magical orders, such as the Masons, who won't tell you they're a magical order in public. Well, it's not a very secret society if everyone knows about it. <laughs> it's right in the name, guys. I'm just saying. <laughs> I did want to uh, mention, if I could, Bella, about the about the technomancy. You guys have probably already done all your research on this, but uh, the chaos magicians have done a lot of work with those ideas. Yeah. If you're, if, yeah, if you're familiar with them. That's so funny. You're so funny. See, this is how magic works because I'd already received that information from spirit about chaos magic. And I haven't worked with chaos magic because I like things in order, but, um, yeah, I'll look into that. I got a message from spirit just yesterday. So thank you for being the voice of deity. I was not listening. <laughs> Here's your friendly reminder. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That is how paganism works. We see deity all around us all the time. We believe that we're, we're swimming in an energetic sea that has, some things have turned into solid things, but the energy is everywhere. And so we just trust the universe. And you know how you're like, oh, sometimes prayer works and sometimes prayer doesn't. And prayer always works. You know, sometimes you're just praying for things you don't actually need. And it really helps when you pray for small things like help me get a parking space and then you get a parking space and then you see that, oh my goodness, my prayer work. Like my husband went across the street. We live, we live in front of a river and my husband had wanted to catch fish out of the river and feed us for, I don't know, four or five years. So he went over there a couple summers ago and he was like, I'm going to feed my family out of this river. I'm going to feed my family out of this river today, right now. And he's trying to make his magic work, right? And he's throwing his fish in around. He's, I'm going to feed my family out of this river. Now, he didn't say I'm going to catch fish out of this river. He said, I'm going to feed my family out of this river. So he's sitting there, and all of a sudden, he's casting, and he feels this tap on his shoulder, and he turns around, and there is a man standing there. Now, we live in the middle of nowhere. We live on a vacation resort that sometimes has people in the houses that are like the vacationers, but we don't, we live in the middle of nowhere. We live in the Wenatchee Forest, Bigfoot territory. And this man is standing there with a platter that's covered in tin foil. And he says, Hey, sir, um, I saw you fishing here. And I, me and my wife caught all these fish this morning and we've cooked them up, but we can't eat them all. And I'm wondering if your family would like this for dinner. So my, uh, my husband, and this is honestly one of the reasons that he's my husband, <laughs> comes in with a platter of fish and says, um, look, look what I brought home from the river, honey. <laughs> <laughs> so that's magic, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you want to learn more about me, you can go to atcwicca.org. Under ATC events on the menu page, they will show you a calendar and a bunch of Facebook inv um, invites and links to where you can click on a link and it will take you to a uh, URL that will bring you into a meeting very much like this, but it's in Microsoft Teams. You do not have to have any kind of special uh, software to get into it. And you can go to our events with, with rituals and, and um, workshops, things like that happening all the time. It's building. There's a lot of things happening right now because it's Litha and Litha is um, the height of the sun and sky. It's like the full moon of the year. And we, we recognize the beginning of summer and we celebrate it. So there are a lot of rituals on there. If you want to go, you're welcome to. We won't, we don't card you at the door and see if you're pagan. Uh, we just ask that you be nice. Um, and honest curiosity is always welcome. Then wiccanseminary.edu is the name of my college. I'm dean of a college. That is the college that I created. And um, it is the only state-recognized Wiccan seminary in the United States. There are other seminaries. They're not 
um, accredited or state recognized. We don't have any accredited Wiccan seminaries because there's not enough of us that are alike that we can get together and agree on curriculum. There's, there's like us and not really anybody else that's like us. So there are, um, if you want to know more about me personally, you can go to belladonnalaveau.com. And there's my web page. I am available on Facebook. The Aquarian Tabernacle Church is all over Facebook. We probably have a church near you. If you're interested in going physically to check them out sometime in the future after a COVID pandemic, because all our churches are, of course, closed right now. But yeah, you're allowed to participate online if you're interested. We do not proselytize. We don't believe that, um, we don't believe in trying to get people to convert people. We believe that you're on your own path and we honor that. So whatever that is, you know, we don't try to, to talk you into our way of believing. It's just, it's not how we believe. So it just doesn't happen. We're not trying to save anybody's soul. And it doesn't, we don't expect you to pay us money to be a member of our church. So it, there's not any reason to try to gain members, you know, so you can come and visit. And if you want to come back, you can come back, but nobody's going to be calling you and saying, Hey, come to church or, you know, give up Christ and be a witch. It just doesn't happen. We, we also think that, that um, the Christian deities are real deities. We don't believe that they're not, you know, that we believe that all deities are real. We think that Jesus is um, a manifestation of the Oak King. So like we recognize him as a deity in our pantheon. And there are witches that pray to Jesus. There have been instances where Dusty and I both have prayed to Jesus. I've actually seen Jesus three times in my ministry, a very, very spiritual person. I was always very spiritual. My first spiritual like experience that I know God talked to me, I was five. So I, I believe in all of the, I believe that God shows up in the way that we need to see it and that it's not a specific um, one thing. It's whatever we need to grow and that there's all of these manifestations of deity that our cultures have have developed over the years and that they're all manifestations of the same. Okay. So I think we're at the end of our time. Yes. Yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, Bella. That was awesome. I was thinking because our last sacred space visit was to a Buddhist temple and we, they had like all the di deities on the wall and we did like a scavenger hunt through them and I was like oh my gosh we could do the same thing in your place there is so many everywhere it was so amazing thank you so much it has been a pleasure to meet all of you I hope that you have a wonderful um after discussion and feel free to hit me up on Facebook and let me know that this is where we met and um so that I know who you are and because I, I go to people's Facebook pages to see if they're pagan or supporting Black Lives Matters and yeah <laughs> stuff like that before our friend them. So if you give me a shout out, I'll know who you are. All right. Y'all have a Let's great day. Merry meet and Merry Park. Blessed be. Thank you, Bella. Blessed have be. a good Thank afternoon. You, you too.